okay so let's start with asset allocation part now let me move on to the asset allocation here we go okay so i'm just going to cover some basic things in asset allocation i'm going to cover the reading 13 because reading 12 and 14 is self-explanatory and more or less it's quite uh, obvious and you know intuitive so let's see in reading 13 we have some interesting concepts uh, mean variance optimization we have been hearing about this uh, a lot of time in the CFA curriculum. So what is MVO? Let's understand in nutshell. So under MVO what we do is basically we take the historical returns of assets and the risk of that portfolio and based on uh, risk of the returns and the uh, risk of the assets. So risk is basically the standard deviation. right? So risk and return of the assets and based on that, we run it into a computer program and the computer program gives us an output. It gives us an output that what is your optimal portfolios. So it could be a portfolio ABC with this asset allocation or a portfolio XYZ with this allocation. Now what happens? Both the portfolio has the same risk, right? So under the mean variance optimization, you are bound to use the efficient frontier. So in the efficient quantity for the same level of risk, you will choose a portfolio with higher level of returns. So you know the level of risk is same, 4%, 4%, but the returns is higher in portfolio ABC. So under MBO, you will choose portfolio ABC. What does this MBO does? Basically based on the returns, historical returns and the historical risk, it expects that the portfolio will uh, do the same, uh, you know, behave the same way in terms of correlation to the other assets of the portfolio and it will uh, generate the expected returns. So bet between two portfolios, if the level of risk is same, the portfolio with higher returns will be chosen in MVO. Right, so that is all about MVO. But MVO has some problems, right? So we'll just check what, what other problems we have. So the critics or the criticism of the MVO is ego, garbage in, garbage out. A bad input of data will give you a incorrect output. Concentrated asset allocation over here I have taken an example since the there are no other constraints that as asset, asset class cannot have more than 10% in a single stock or the portfolio cannot have more than 5% in a single stock so the MVO by, by, by chasing the returns it might come up with a portfolio which has a very high asset allocation so that way concentrated asset allocation is one problem skewness and kurtosis obviously now they are just concerned about the returns and the risk so they are not seeing how skewed the returns are or how, how much kurtosis this distribution has. So that is not taken care of. Risk diversification. You suppose this asset, asset A and asset B, asset X, both are from the equity asset class. Now what has happened because of no constraint on the asset class, the system is giving us an allocation of say 56% into a single asset class because there are no constraint on the asset class or any uh, because while running the MVO all it is taking is two inputs returns and risk so it does not consider the asset class it's not considering the asset class like equity so that is why when it is giving the output for each asset class it is not considering the allocation to a single asset class so in that case your risk is not diversified ignores the liabilities obviously over here we are not taking care of the liabilities so in in any company you'll have both the sides which is the asset and the liability Right now the MVO focus only on the assets but the, that is a drawback because you might have a return from your MVO so suppose 10% return you are getting from your MVO but your cost of fund or the liability itself is 11% right now the MVO is not able to solve your problem of funding your liabilities because your liability is at 11% but your MVO is at 10% so by ignoring the liabilities MVO does not help you single period is basically uh, now the MVO takes a historical return at a point and then generates the uh, optimal allocation so in the sense uh, if that optimal allocation does not hold true or the correlations between the assets change then for the uh, the, the MBO cannot uh, gen you know take into account all those things and it has to regenerate the portfolio so it, it has to actually rebalance and you have to it has to create a new portfolio so all those things are the problem the single period problems is solved by the Monte Carlo simulation So how do you correct MBO? How do you improve MBO? One is the reverse MBO. Okay, so what was MBO? Under MBO, we were taking returns, step one, and generating the portfolio. That was the step two. Right? 
But in reverse MBO, what we are doing in reverse MBO? In reverse MBO, we are assuming an optimal portfolio. We are assuming ki okay, this portfolio looks to be optimal. Let me start with this portfolio and let me see and go reverse on this MBO and see how the returns are computed. And based on this portfolio, the system will come up with the returns of the uh, stocks. Right, because this is a reverse. So from 1 to 2, now we are going 2 to 1. And based on this implied returns, we will again run the MVO process. This same process. From returns to portfolio. From returns to portfolio. If this portfolio matches with this portfolio, that means it was an optimal portfolio. But if this portfolio is better than this portfolio, that means we have corrected the MVO problem of ego, which is the garbage in, garbage out. Are you with me? Returns to portfolio is MVO. From portfolio to returns, say from step 2 to step 1. Now this output that we have got in terms of returns in step 1 will be used to generate a portfolio. And if this portfolio matches with this portfolio or is close to this portfolio, then the optimization is proper. But if this portfolio is better than this portfolio, that means the inputs over here that we were initially taking are not were not optimal and based on the reverse optimization these inputs are optimal and this portfolio is better so this is reverse mvo and black letterman is basically an extension so in, in black letterman what happens the implied returns the implied returns this is known as the implied returns over here the model allows us to change these returns okay change the historical returns the implied returns and see what could be the model portfolio or the mvo so three steps in black uh, in MVO we do step one takes the historical return and risk generates the optimal portfolio. In reverse MVO we start with an optimal portfolio get the implied return. Based on the implied return we generate the portfolio. We see if the portfolios are same or similar then the process was okay. If it is not then the new implied returns must be considered for the portfolio. In black letterman we have the option of even changing this implied return to simulate the MVO. Right, so that is the difference. Quite easily in, uh, understandable, very confused in the book. Then we have the investor utility function. We know that the investor chooses the highest return for the same level of risk. If the, the level of risk is same, the custom the user will choose the portfolio with the highest level of risk. So that's the investor utility function. Now what's happening is there is a formula wherein we expect a return minus you know 0 0.05 basis points into lambda which is the risk aversion of the investor into variance of the portfolio will give you a expected return right so suppose you have two portfolios which have the same expected return u of a is equal to u of b both are giving you 7% return now the problem is when you put this formula and in this the investor aversion is 4% investor aversion is 4 risk aversion and expected returns are different but the portfolios are giving you 7% now you don't know which portfolio to select okay so if when your utility function or the expected return function gives you the same result if two portfolios have same utility or same return then portfolio with the highest ROI safety first ratio should be selected what is ROI safety first ratio is RM minus RL upon the standard deviation which is basically R is the required return right so you have written over here expected return minus required return upon standard deviation so ROI safety first ratio is important so portfolio with the highest ROI safety first ratio will be selected for optimal asset allocation choose the portfolio with highest sharp ratio okay this is very important so over here we choose the portfolio with the highest return in terms of risk but if I want to run MVO to choose the optimal allocation I need to take the risk adjusted return. So what is the risk adjusted return? Risk adjusted return is sharp ratio. Right? If this portfolio had a sharp ratio of say 4 and this portfolio has a sharp ratio suppose ratio of say 7, 6. Even though the returns over here are low, example, the sharp ratio is higher. So the for the optimal allocation, the system will tell you that take the optimal allocation or the uh, highest sharp ratio which is portfolio xyz 
these are hypothetical numbers don't go into the logic of it i'm just wanted to make you understand the concept so in the question if it is asked which portfolio has the optimal allocation then you compute the portfolio with the highest sharp ratio and if you are asked which is the portfolio with the highest utility and if both the utilities are same then you compare the portfolio which has the highest sharp ratio so that is important okay so depending on the question you have to select which ratio to be added so risk budgeting like uh, you know in your monthly uh, sorry uh, in your investments there are returns and the returns come at a risk so to achieve a risk you need to take uh, to achieve, achieve a return you need to take a risk but the risk needs to be budgeted right you cannot take unlimited risk so say 10% is your var limit or value at risk limit for a particular trading month or an investment month so uh, what 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 are the components of this so mctr is the marginal contribution to total risk and absolute contribution to total risk see marginal contribution to total risk is basically the change in risk due to 1% or you know one one basis point or whatever depends on what is the portfolio change in the portfolio position of an asset class an absolute contribution to risk is weight of that asset class into the mctr right so if you consider that way these are the same things so so that that is important it's very simple it's it's similar to the marginal var the marginal value at risk formula it's simply beta of that asset into the portfolio standard deviation so that is your marginal if 1% or one basis point of that asset is increased then how much the risk will increase and if and what is the absolute contribution to risk is simply the total risk uh the total risk of the portfolio for each asset class so the weight of the asset class into the mctr we don't have to really put our brains together to understand this it's very simple and just remember and go by the formula if you take an excel sheet and compute this you will get the beta value beta is basically covariance upon the variance now what is optimal allocation point so uh, the book has a table where we have to solve some simple issue, simple problems what they are trying to say is the optimal allocation point for any portfolio is the point at which the excess return equals to the mctr that means the marginal cont now there is no more benefit of taking any more risk your returns will not go if you take any more risk so that is the point at which your portfolio becomes optimally allocated if you remember from economics from level 2 and level 1 the marginal point of the of the uh, marginal point was at the point at which you know pumping in more labor or pumping in more money will not generate more output so marginal point is the optimal point at which the expected return or the excess return is optimal okay now in the in the first slide we discussed that mbo has some problems so there are these problems can be solved by all these methods one problem to solve the mbo ignore liabilities method is to use an alm approach because alm takes care of asset and liability both so the first thing is surplus optimization So when we do surplus optimization, we don't take only asset size. Say the asset is ten million dollars and liability is seven million dollars. So we take the surplus three million dollars and run the portfolio optimization. The two portfolio approaches is basically portfolio one matches the liabilities and the remaining assets are used to seek the returns. So here the liability is seven million. So suppose keeping a buffer of one million, I put aside eight million to serve this liability, and with the two million. i will go and run my mbo and invest in riskier assets to achieve more returns the agenda is to first fund the liability and then do the optimization with the remaining money integrated alm approach is continuous management of a asset and liability see the banks banks do this kind of things because what are the assets for the banks assets for the banks are the loans that they have given you loans right and what are the liabilities for the bank liabilities for the banks is the money that you have deposited so that is why the loans and deposited since it changes every day now the value of all these will change every day so the bank always has to do the management of the anl the asset and the liability 
So the integrated ALM approach is taking both the sides into consideration before taking any decision. So by using these three methods, you will solve the problem of ignoring the liabilities in the mean variance optimization. So this was the main thing that I wanted to tell you. It's more from an understanding point of view, uh, not to get really lost into the definitions. So this will help you. Thank you.